why did DeepSeek work? And what is everybody else doing now that DeepSeek is here? This is going to be a bit of a longer one, but now that DeepSeek is number one in the App Store, I think it bears unpacking the implications of what is going on. So number one, besides putting on a beanie, is DeepSeek got to the App Store top spot with two innovations people aren't talking about. One, they showed their reasoning. That is a big, big deal. It makes it easy for people to edit, change, adjust their prompts. In fact, I have heard that OpenAI is using those reasoning outputs that DeepSeek openly displays to help with model distillation already. So like already the learnings from DeepSeek are getting back to OpenAI. But the larger, the larger lesson learned there is that showing reasoning is a UI innovation that more model makers should adopt. It makes it really obvious what the model is doing. That leads me to innovation number two, which is by offering it for free and by making R1 a reasoning model widely available in the App Store, you are getting to what I call the autocomplete crowd. I have lots of folks I know like this who are outside tech. Many others do too. I like to think of it as Uncle Ted at Thanksgiving, who will tell you chat GPT is nothing but autocomplete and roll his eyes over the turkey. It's a chat GPT chat GPT two level response. It's like, I saw this a few years ago, it was kind of terrible, and I don't think it's gotten better since. Well, it's hard to argue that it's not gotten better when you're looking at DeepSeek and you can literally see the reasoning. And I think that is a big factor in why this app has shot to the top in the app store. I don't think there was any gaming involved. I've seen people who said, well, they gamed the algorithm. I don't think they did. I think they just produced a really good experience. So this brings me to the second part of the video. What is everybody doing about that? Number one, everybody is not reading their terms of service, which are super creepy and concerning. If you look at it, you only get redressed through Chinese courts. They do not actually delete your data when you delete your account. They are keeping a monitoring table that they tell you that they are keeping for quote unquote illegal activities that they won't define. They do not clearly give you rights to the model outputs. So in theory, if you got a startup idea from a DeepSeek model output, it is possible that DeepSeek could make a legal claim to that startup. I don't know that they will. I'm not saying that they will. But the fact that the legal terms aren't clear should be really worrying. And if you compare them versus OpenAI, like people complain a lot and rightly hold OpenAI and other model makers to a high bar. DeepSeek is a lot farther back on that. DeepSeek has really, really concerning uh, and invasive terms of use. They log your keystrokes. Now, my crowd, the people who are talking here are going to immediately say, that doesn't matter. I can run the model locally. And my answer to you is you can run the model locally, but 99.99% of people are using the freaking app and they are going through that same terms of service and not even noticing. So that's the first thing that's happening. And it is a concern. If you're worried about TikTok and you're worried about like the app collection and data collection from TikTok, I would argue this is worse because it captures your direct thinking and the model outputs are things you can't necessarily use. It's scary. Okay. The second implication around what people are doing is model makers in the US are desperately playing catch up. That's not a surprise, right? But they're playing catch up in interesting ways. They are doubling down on the fact that they need the money. They need the billions of dollars they're investing for chips for next generation models. And they're arguing it on two points, which I think are both correct. First, if you want to make a next generation model, that is much harder than making a model for parity. And what DeepSeek has done is make a model that seeks to be roughly on parity with state of the art. And that is easier versus making a model that is going to push the cutting edge. And that's much more expensive. And so that's, that's piece one. Piece two is serving all of that inference, serving all of that compute to people who ask for responses is not cheap and it takes a lot of chips. And so what Wall Street didn't understand yesterday is that most of the chips that people buy are for inference. It's for serving the model. It is not for training the model. Most of Jensen's sales are for serving the model. The reason DeepSeek went down yesterday is because they did not have enough chips to serve the model at scale. 
And so I, I think that there's a little bit of a defensiveness there. I've noticed that. I'm not discounting it. People do get defensive when competition comes up. But I think that net, net, they're probably correct that they need the money to advance the field. Now, I will say one of the things that is under discussed, and this is the third thing that like people aren't really talking about, but people are actually doing. Uh, so if you're in the tech community, if you're a developer and you're like replicating what DeepSeek is doing, what you are doing in replicating the model and the technical details of the paper is something that was not possible, but was tried two years ago. And so what they are able to do now with group policy reinforcement, with essentially reading reasoning out of the data stream that they're training on was tried previously and it didn't work and now it does. And the reason why it works is because reasoning models like O1 have come out, generated a ton of tokens into the data stream. We have a lot of evidence that's very public of humans either praising or criticizing specific model responses. And that is now in the general internet data availability, which means DeepSea can train on it, which means that other model makers can train on it too. And so what we're seeing really is a reasoning takeoff moment. Before, there weren't enough examples of model reasoning out there with humans either saying yes or no, good or bad, for models to learn what reasoning looked like just by reading through the data set and doing some group policy reinforcement. Now there are. In the last year and a half, two years, that has changed. Now there's enough reasoning examples out there that you can hit a critical mass. I think the number I saw for critical mass was 800,000 responses or 800,000 samples. I don't know if that exact number is true, but the point is there's enough of them out there that you hit critical mass and you were able to actually use a technique that had been tried previously and discarded to grow a reasoning model more organically, for lack of a better term. We're not talking about artisanal organic models here. We're saying basically the model didn't need an external validation point to learn reasoning. And that is a big deal. And that is being rapidly replicated now that people have figured out it works. And so that's the third thing people are doing is they're replicating DeepSeek's results and they're seeing it work. And that means that we are at a point where models are effectively very close to self-improving. They can look at reasoning, they can learn reasoning on their own. And if they can do that, then the higher quality responses they produce into the data stream are going to be used by the next generation of models to improve faster. So that is one of the big long-term implications is that effectively DeepSeek has accelerated model development again by making reasoning more transparent and available. So we'll see what happens. It's a collection of things. So first off, we talked about DeepSeek and their position in the App Store and why it worked. And second, I covered the three things that I think are most important coming out of this, right? Like how we handle the terms of service, what the model makers are doing as far as their investment levels. And finally, what actual people are doing when they figure out that they can replicate this uh, reasoning development, chain of thought development, from the data stream, which I think is perhaps the most interesting implication so far. So it's been weird. It's been fun. DeepSeek is here.